Welcome to the Love Lab Podcast, a safe place to get real about sex. Whether you're a man, woman, single, or couple, this is the show for you. Because, well, sex matters. We are your hosts, Kevin Anthony and Celine Remy. Welcome back to the Love Lab Podcast. This is episode 46, and it's titled Sexual Fantasies Versus Reality, Debunking Myths. And we have special guest author, C.D. Reese. So this is going to be, I think, a really fun one, because one of the things that we realize is that, and we realize this in our own personal lives, uh, as well as working with clients, is that women tend to want to fantasize about things that they may not actually want in real life. And, and why this is interesting and very important for guys to know is like, as guys, we're super literal, right? So you know, when, <laughs> when a woman says, oh, yeah, I have this fantasy about being tied up and, you know, flogged or whatever it is. We go, oh, okay, I can do that. I'll make a (laughs) flogger in the garage. I'll have it up here in 10 minutes, you know. (laughs) And and the woman's thinking, no, 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 you don't get it. That's that's not actually what I was thinking. So so we thought it would be really, really fun and uh, interesting for our listeners to have an author and who writes about this stuff and dig into some of those ideas. Yes, and so I, I got really excited because, I uh, met Christine C.D. Rice uh, for a group and then I, I, I started to read her books because I was like, well, might as well see who she is. So I dove into marriage games and it's kind of like this, I want to say like BDSM slash erotic novel per se. And it was, it was really cool because what I noticed is First of all, I'm not into BDSM in my real life. And as you know, if you've been listening to the Love Lab podcast, we do occasionally go to sex parties, we explore sexualities, and we've been around BDSM. Lots and, uh, of BDSM. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not a flavor. Um, that's just, we, we're more vanilla and that's fine by us. And um, when in real life I'm around BDSM, I notice that I shut down. Um, I've been next to scenes and it, na- it really doesn't turn me on. As a matter of fact, I get turned off and it becomes really difficult for me to open up sexually. But I was reading Marriage Games and it's all about BDSM. And I can't wait, by the way, to dive in deeper with that. But I got really horny. <laughs> and I have to say, like, <laughs> Kevin got a lot of really good sex out of me reading those books. So I need to, I think we need to, to thank Christine for that. Thank you. <laughs> Anytime. Anytime. I, I did get a little more weekday, uh, you know, <laughs> attention that week. <laughs> but before we, like, fully introduce Christine, let me just read her, her uh, formal bio here. So C.D. Reese is a New York Times bestselling author. She still has to chop wood and carry water, which was buried in the fine print. Wow. (laughs) Her lawyer is working it out with God. But in the meantime, if you call and she doesn't pick up, she's at the well, howling buckets. Born in New York City, she moved to Hollywood, California to get her master's degree in screenwriting from USC. In case you want to know, that went nowhere. But it did give her a big enough ego to write novels. (laughs) She's frequently referred to as the Shakespeare of small. Which is flattering, (laughs) but hasn't ever gotten her out of chopping that cord of wood. If you meet her in person, you should call her Christine. Christine, welcome Hi. to the Love Lab. <laughs> Hi, that, that was great. I really enjoyed that intro. I'm really glad that I could uh, help Kevin out and you out too, because, you know, it's about both of you. Uh, I'm really glad that, you know, Afternoon Delight was... was <laughs> morning Delight and Evening Delight. <laughs> So um, one of the things I want to start with is uh, how did you get into writing books about BDSM? I was really intrigued by Fifty Shades of Grey, Um, how she did things and said things and had kink on the page that I was afraid to write about before. And it was like this open door, like, you can do this. You can say these things and you can like reading about this and writing about this and it's okay. And that was really, that was really formative for me. And that's when I said, all right. And I cracked my knuckles and I really just got down to business. And when you were writing these books, were you writing them with the intention of trying to reach you know, the BDSM crowd or the non-BDSM crowd? 
That is an excellent question. I was not trying to reach the BDSM crowd because I like to sell books. Um, <laughs> and, and I'm not saying that people who are into BDSM don't read, but I, 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 it's a very small community and there are writers doing great work that books that are directed towards that community, like Joey W. Hill does fantastic BDSM books. They are also very correct to the community. Mm -hmm. and very correct within the scope of the lifestyle because it's that's important. I am less interested in that. I am more interested in talking to uh, regular, regular, that's not the right word, people who are vanilla or kink curious, who just want to get turned on, who just want an emotional story, who just want to maybe experiment a little bit and to show how this can fit into your regular life. This, you don't have to commit to an entire lifestyle choice, which is a fine lifestyle choice. I am not you know, saying it's a bad, it's a fine lifestyle choice, but it's not for everybody. The sex, however, could be for a lot more people than it appeals to mm-hmm. in, initially when given the whole array of toys and tools and rooms and uh, <laughs> you know, the, the whole thing. Um, so that was, I was really going for that crowd. Mm. Mm-hmm. So it sounds like for you, it was very cathartic to give yourself permission to write about this subject. And at the same time, I think it's very cathartic for the readers to be able to give themselves permission to explore the fantasy, to explore outside of the box. And because, as we always say, our biggest sex organ is between our ears, right? It's our mind. Mm-hmm. I mean, reading really engages that. Um, and so I can really see how that gets put together and and it worked for me like I said earlier it's not something that turns me on in general but reading it did turn me on and yeah and then I brought it into my sex life you know (laughs) yeah and you can bring whatever you want I mean you can bring even just what's between your ears or just a little maybe tie me up maybe just a little of this or that and that's sometimes all that you need or want It doesn't have to be, you can read about the whole array of possibilities and say, but actually getting tied up is uncomfortable and it it hurts my shoulder and I'm, I don't, you know, and I don't feel like it today and it takes too long, you know, to get this whole apparatus together. Let's just do it. And in my mind, I'll pretend you're tying me up and it's great. (laughs) So obviously 50 shades was huge. And so it showed that there was a demand for this type of thing. But I was curious, you know, did you do any other research? Like, how did you know that this was going to appeal to people outside of the BDSM community? I tried not to. I had done uh, a lot of research on the subject and kind of took, w- took what I needed from it. I didn't want to load it down with too many of the, there are a lot of rules. So, you know, in 50 shades, which you may not have read, which is fine. He has a whole contract and actually mm-hmm. the contract is super hot. It's like written in this legalese, but it's all these totally hot acts. Right. <laughs> and it, you know, and, and the, the tension between the legalese and what they're talking about is just amazing. But I didn't, it's very easy to get loaded down with the, t- with the kinds of toys you can use and how it's set up and how permission works and how consent works. And I wanted to be very clear about consent, but I didn't want a whole contract thing or to discuss every single act. I needed her to be surprised. Whereas in a lot of BDSM, you're not really supposed to surprise people. Yeah, you design your scene ahead of time. Like you, you yeah. create the scene and then you get into the scene after everything has been meticulously outlined. Yeah, or there's an incredible amount of trust with yes. the dominant, which is another, you know, <laughs> it, it can go. It, but I needed to do it in a way that was hottest mm-hmm. while still letting the reader know that they could trust me. Mm-hmm. to not take them someplace that was frightening. Mm-hmm. So 
I, you know, I found that there was a good balance in terms of like explaining and describing some of the world. I even kind of like learned some things and I was like, wow, she actually gives a lot of details about how the lifestyle works uh, without becoming too heady or like too frightening or like, oh my God, this is huge. Um, but I'm curious, like, how do you do your research? Like, how did you learn all of this stuff? Where do you get this information? Oh, oh, I, this is, I have a lot of imagination. Like my imagination is like, what am I So, um, I also have uh, a long history, shall we say. I was brought up in New York, as you know, and I went to a lot of, cl- I just went to a lot of clubs in New York. And you would go to a club thinking that you were just going to a club and you'd walk in on this whole thing that this is a thing. This is not what I expected to see here. But, you know, <laughs> I'm cool. I'm cool. I'd say I'm cool. Yeah, I'm cool. I'll have a drink. Yeah, yeah, cool. Um, so there, there was a lot of that. There was a lot of reading. There was a lot of talking to people involved, uh, which was fun and also arousing in its own way. Mm-hmm. You know, so I took kind of what made me excited and put that into the books. Ah, see, this is <laughs> I love that we're getting to this this part, right? Because what what you didn't say is, well, I've been in the lifestyle for twenty years, right? Like that's not what you said. You said you've you've experienced some stuff, you've seen some things, you used a lot of imagination, and you used the things that you thought would turn you on. And I think that that was kind of a big uh, part that we wanted to focus on in this episode was the difference between the reality of it and the fantasy of it. And I love that even in creating the work itself, you brought your own imagination and fantasy and things that turned you on into it. And I right. knew and the it. things that were like, you know, not were not right for me. Uh-huh. I, I, you know, I just didn't mention it, mm. you know, and the things that the thing about fantasy is that it scrapes away a lot of the the edges, right? So you, you're going to scrape away that, you know, your leg gets cramped when you're in a certain position for too long. You know what I mean? Because this is a thing, you know? It, this is not, it's, just, it's hard to, with a leg cramp to actually, can, you know. Relax into it and enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Like, so, you know, you take, you take, take all that stuff out, you know, mm-hmm. and, and just you stick only with the stuff that's emotionally uncomfortable and physically comfortable in the right ways, mm-hmm. right? So you, I wanted to head into emotional discomfort. Mm-hmm. And right, right? I mean, yeah. I, I think, Celine, that you saw the emotional discomfort there. Mm-hmm. And how was that for you? Um, I mean, it's, it, it's interesting for me, you know, I guess also being very much into sexuality, like I would say like not that nothing shocks me but I'm very much open to everybody's sexual expression uh, and I approach it more from a curiosity standpoint so I go like oh this is how somebody gets turned on or like oh I'm witnessing this and I and I can go like oh this is uncomfortable I wouldn't want that but I'm glad somebody likes it or like this could be things like this it just shows me more like it helps me to know myself more I don't really bring any judgment to that at all so maybe I'm more unique in that sense because I don't have so much shame or baggage around sexuality so it didn't weigh me down so much um but um I liked to see both the Yes, I I like the emotional in there. I have to say, though, in the books for me, two things. I was more turned on by the first book than I was by the second book. And the reason why is because the dynamic of the relationship, they, what I would describe, have a very standard relationship where they're not very evolved in their communication skills. And it's a massive turn off for me. Yeah, and in yeah. the book number two, it was just as hard as the one, but I kind of wanted to be like, get your shit together and <laughs> finally communicate like proper adults. That's the thing about romance is that, you know, that's the thing about romance is that the conflicts are from usually a lack of communication. So you have to kind of draw those, you know, draw, the, draw those out. Um, well, you know, the interesting thing about that too is that, you know, from our perspective of somebody who's not only done a lot of work around communication, but also teaching people how to, to do this, those sorts of... Um, Dynamic. dynamics sort of drive us crazy. But we, we do have to realize that this is actually the way most people relate. 
Um, and so most people reading this book are going to read it and go, oh, yeah, I've been there. I've had that exact experience. I know exactly what, you know, she's describing here. So it's, it's not it's not wrong or anything. Yeah. It's just we're just like, oh, come on. You can do better than that. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I mean, and, and there's always this, this tension um, in this, at least when I write BDSM, between the dominance in the bedroom not being acceptable outside the bedroom. Mm -hmm. I thought it is very well about that too, because I think for a lot of women, it's a place where it becomes difficult to accept, you know, every woman tends to see herself as, I'm a strong, powerful woman. I'm not going to take shit for, you know, like anyone and men included. And yet at the same time, there's this, this, this deep yearning of, being taken, of surrendering. And and I think in the bedroom, it gives us that opportunity to reach those places within us where we can finally like open up in ways we don't do. But at the same time, just because you are submissive in the bedroom or in that power play dynamic, it doesn't mean all the time, but you might explore a uh, power dynamic in the bedroom in that moment, doesn't make you weak or less of a human being. And I did like that in your books that um, Diana didn't, she wasn't portrayed as a wimpy woman. Like she was still like a business owner and, 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 and got her things. And yes, she had her weaknesses and stuff and she liked a certain type of sexuality, but she was very relatable and likable and appealing to strong women to be like, this is, she could be me. <laughs> right, and this is where the fantasy dynamic can come in because I, I, I do, I do want to get back to that in that we, you know, it, we say men are very literal and women aren't. So we can stick with that for a while, even though of course there's overlap, but we get to, we have this in our minds that if I surrender here and I like this and I say that I like this, then that makes me a certain thing. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make you a certain anything. Okay. It makes you complex. That's all that that's all it makes you. But it's hard to separate sometimes those fantasies from reality. And, and even in some cases, it's hard to even parse that far further and say, yes, I like this as a fantasy, but I really don't want you to spank me. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, not not red, you know, maybe once or twice. <laughs> so, you know, it, but that takes such an, a, ma a massive amount of communication with yourself mm -hmm. first. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. First with yourself to say, this is what I fantasize about. This is my body reacting to how I'm thinking about these things. But I don't actually want that right now or maybe ever. But this is, <laughs> you know. Absolutely. I'm making hand motions, which is absolutely not helpful to you right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I see that too, even if we take it in the concept of like a lot of guys, you know, most guys will fantasize about threesome and we have a whole threesome um, episode of whether or not you should have a threesome and stuff. If you haven't listened to it, go back to it and listen to it. But I do see that happening a lot. It's in most men's fantasy list. Like I want to have a threesome, but I can guarantee you that most men real life experience of a threesome is nowhere near that fantasy in their head. <laughs> It's a lot yeah. of responsibility for a guy. If yeah, there's but, two women in the bed, that's a lot. He's had a lot of work to do. That is true. And as a guy, now, of course, I've had my share of threesomes, so I, I'm taking myself out of this. But as, as most guys, uh, they are not at all thinking about how much responsibility and work it is, but they really do want it to happen. <laughs> it's only after it happens that they go, oh, shit, that was more than I bargained for. But <laughs> You know, I was, look uh, I was looking at some research and I found something from Pornhub. Every year they bring you stats. And in 2018, they did their whole like overview of statistics. And uh, what they found is that women are twice as likely to watch content featuring gangbang and double penetration porn. But they are also twice as likely to watch romantic themed videos. And that study, I think, really nailed it in exactly what your books are all about because I think they kind of give you the experience 
of that, well, not that it's gangbang and double penetration. Actually, well, there were some butt plug experiences and stuff. So, you know, like the <laughs> ideas of that, but there's still some of the romance element. And I was like, I can really relate to that. Like, we lack that idea of the gangbang or being dominated. And yet we also lack the whole romantic gesture. Right. And, and, and here's the thing, like women that are listening, uh, raise your hand if you actually really want a gangbang. Like, there aren't that many hands going up in the air, I can guarantee it. And yet, when watching porn, women are twice as likely to watch porn about gangbangs. So what that really shows us is this difference between what women fantasize about and what they actually want in life. And I love, I love, CD, the way that you said it earlier. You said, oh, it's maybe not something that I want right now, or maybe even ever, or but maybe, right? And that's... Right. And, but just let my brain do its thing. And I, at one point you just say, I am not going to be ashamed or embarrassed of what's in my brain mm. because that's what it is. But as far as my body goes, I should have complete uh, agency over what I choose mm-hmm. at any point. And very often those are completely different things and we have to be okay with that. Mm-hmm. This is so good. So I'm curious so i i one of my questions was whether or not you get turned on about your writing and you kind of answered that already um you do get turned totally on, right <laughs> i knew it i knew it oh yeah <laughs> i mean because i mean if i'm not getting turned on well Who else? i can't guarantee that someone else is going to get turned on so that's how i know if i'm writing an erotic scene that's how i know it works mm. oh that is so good um <laughs> So what kind of thing do you like to fantasize about that you wouldn't want to have at all happening for you in real life? Uh, I mean, there's, there's the gangbang, um, mm-hmm. but not always. What would sex with a stranger? Mm. Um, tried it. It's not anything. You know, when I, <laughs> I, I was young once and... Uh, <laughs> And that was like, oh, that was terrible. I'm not doing that again. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think about what do I fantasize about? What about about? you? Yeah, Yeah. I'm really curious about that. I think we're all going to take a turn on that one. (laughs) 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 Um, Because we we did discuss that earlier. I'd say sometimes the gangbang fantasy, definitely. Um, and it's funny because then I think about all the logistics um, and having had group sex, I also know like, okay, you got to change the condom, whose cock has been where, washing things, rinsing mouth. I mean, you know, then I get into all the protocols, the safe sex, and it kind of kills the fantasy. Yeah. <laughs> you see, no, but when I fantasize, I take all that out. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I just take it out. I don't need it. It's my brain. It's my brain. <laughs> um, definitely, um, there will be also some stuff of like romantic things. Um, I tend to be more of an, an intellectual and very heady even in my love making so for me it has to be with certain words and I don't always know but it's just the right combination of like the right word at the, at the proper time I definitely will fantasize about being taken sometime anytime anywhere is that something I really want uh, every day no it's more of a rare occurrence so these are kind of things that I fantasize about uh, that I don't specifically want. Another thing I fantasize about, um, I definitely I love women's breasts. And I've had sex with women. Um, I, I don't anymore, but I've had in the past. Um, but it's something I do really get turned on by, and I like that. I think female bodies are just delicious. They are. They, they, <laughs> yes, they I, are. I, I have also experienced sex with women, and um, it's quite nice. It is. It's nice. <laughs> We're all in agreement then. <laughs> we love women's bodies. <laughs> so, but you, Kevin. So, you, I'm curious. Like, tell us about what you thought about what you fantasize. I, is there a fantasy that you think about that you wouldn't want? That I wouldn't want in um, real life. You know. Well, so you and I have had this conversation uh-huh. before about fantasies and stuff, and. You know, what that discussion always comes down to for me is actually all the things that I fantasized about, especially when I was younger, have all come true. So 
Oh, boy. Oh, my gracious. <laughs> but having said that, you know, I, you know I, I'm pretty sure that other people have more imaginative fantasies than, than I do. But, but like the typical things that as guys that we, we think about is, you know, threesome is like the number one fantasy, especially for young men, is like the idea of having more than one woman. Of course, we never think back then about the actual logistics of that and how much work it is. And, you know, most guys can't even satisfy one woman no more or less <laughs> too. <laughs> so, you know, uh, but, you know, I've, that's happened many times in group sex and sex parties and all these different things have pretty much happened. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I haven't really thought, like, the only other thing I can think of is <clears throat> um, the one thing that, that uh, I've thought about in sex parties that has never actually happened, where there's, like, a line of women and you just go from one to the next to the next to the next. <laughs> That's the only thing I can think of. And then but, you don't have to worry about any of them. It's like, you yeah, yeah. satisfy yourselves now. <laughs> you both figured that out. Uh-huh. So I have a good one. I have a good one. I have a, a gay friend, and we've been, he's a, he's a guy, and we've been friends since we were 16. And one day I asked him what, if he had any sex fantasies. I, I wasn't going to, you know, meet them, but I, we were just talking. We were, you know, drinking, of course. And he said, his number one fantasy was being taken by an all girl biker gang. And I was like, you're gay. He said, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and I, you know, okay. You know, does he want that to happen? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, you know, the, the, the beautiful thing about having this discussion and having it all of us share and you share about your friend and all that is that, it gives people permission to fantasize about literally whatever the fuck they want, mm-hmm. right? And it doesn't have to come true in real life. It doesn't mean they actually want it to happen or they're going to try to make it happen or anything like that. But to just let the mind sort of be free to fantasize about whatever you want. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm curious if you have some like steps that you could share um, or advice that you could share with our listeners on giving themselves permission to free their mind because you had to do that in order to be able to write what you write. And I wonder if you found something that worked for you. How do you get yourself in that zone, in the mood to write that? And if, if there's like something you can give them as tips to get there for themselves. I just would say, as soon as you start to fantasize about something and you flinch away in your mind, Just take a deep breath and as a curiosity, say, well, where would that go? But you really have to be, I'm not a psychologist, but I would think that you would really have to be okay with whatever comes out of your brain and to just really know ahead of time, I don't have to want this in real life. Like this can just be something I'm thinking about right now. But it's like baby steps, I think, you know, one little thing at a time. Or, you know, read books. Mm-hmm. There, are lots of, there are lots of books out there from indie romance publishers that go places much, much deeper than I've gone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, mean, I love that. I think it's such a good step when you notice that you censor yourself where you're like, okay, this is as far as I can give myself permission to go then having somebody else tell you by the hand and like mm-hmm. your books will do that they'll be like let me show you my inner world and <laughs> let me see if let's, let's let's watch your body react mm-hmm. to what you're reading um yeah there are some great dark writers out there who write things that are darker than I might ever even consider writing um and there are also some that are not as dark so you kind of have to feel your way through it but it can be a really useful tool yeah, and I think, you know, if, you, if you're the type of person who finds that you're limiting yourself in your fantasies, you should probably also take a look at how you're limiting yourself outside of the realm of fantasy, right? Because if, if in a fantasy world, you won't even allow yourself to really ask for what you want, then in the real world, are you really asking for what you want? And I think that this, like you said, could be such a great tool for people because first allowing yourself to go there in the fantasy world, in the fantasy mind, 
And then maybe that will empower you to actually ask for what you want, especially when you realize that what you actually want is so much easier to ask for than, than the fantasy <laughs> stuff that, that you came up with. <laughs> but also, if you open those commu- lines of communication with your partner, I think that you will be opening up a lot emotional lines of communication that maybe you had kept closed. Mm-hmm. Because it's all about your emotions, really. Mm-hmm. I mean, to me. Yeah, I think for a lot of women, they will relate to that. Um, Yeah, if you feel like you have that emotional connection, that heart opening, like that's what the emotional does. It opens up your heart. I think then we feel that we can open up in every other ways. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) In our bodies. Um, So I can can totally see that. And actually, I do think too that men, especially as men get older, they also crave that intimacy and that, that emotional connection. It's actually a myth that men don't want that. And I think it's detrimental to men's um, sexual expression. And that's what I see in working with my clients, with a lot of the men that I work with. They do want to be met emotionally as well. They don't want to just be the guy who fucks or just needs a hole. That Yeah, sure, maybe when I was 15, all I wanted was a hole. But then I I understood there was so much more to it. Um, And so I think, yes, it works for everyone, that emotional connection. (laughs) <laughs> Absolutely. I'm looking at you, Kevin. Well, I'm like, is there something like that? <laughs> well, I mean, you, you said it very well. I, I can sort of reiterate that. But yeah, I mean, when I was younger, while it wasn't just a hole, um, there was definitely much more of a drive to have sex and the details of it didn't matter all that much. <laughs> but, you know, as you get older, now they matter a lot. I mean, now it's it's to the point where... Even if I was really turned on, if I realized that uh, she's not into it or e- she's just even going through the motions for my sake, I'm like, I'm out. I'm done. Like, mm-hmm. I don't I don't need this just for this. Like, I need that connection, that emotion. I need you to be present with me and really desiring it and wanting it. Because it's your desire to be there with me is what sparks my desire. And without that, I'm just kind of like, eh. I'll go play guitar. <laughs> <laughs> so, Christine, um, I'm curious, how can our listener find more about your work since you tell them they should start reading books? And I know you've got at least a dozen books. I mean, there's so many. I've only read two of yours, and so I have so much more to cover. Uh, so tell our listeners more about where they can find you and about your work. <laughs> All of my books are on Amazon um, in ebook form. They are only on Amazon right now. They're Amazon exclusive on ebook, but they're in paperback everywhere. They are different levels of heat. So Marriage Games is would be a five flame heat. And (laughs) Submission Series would be five flame heat. And then, you know, it goes down from there for readers who aren't in the mood for that right now and are looking for something more emotional or something sweeter. um, You can pretty much tell by the, when you read the descriptions. By the cover. (laughs) Yeah, and the cover, yeah. Like if there's a collar on it, you get where we're going here. (laughs) So, uh, or there's a guy with without a shirt on. Well, that's a certain thing. That's hot, but not graphically hot, or somewhat less graphically hot, or not BDSM. You know that whole. Uh huh. If there's two people kissing, that's what you get. That's what. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the name is CD Reese, uh, and you should check them out. And mm-hmm. if you're interested in more in the genre, if you go to my author page on Amazon, it'll show you what other people who buy my books also buy. Mm-hmm. Awesome. So you'll have an idea there mm-hmm. of what else what might work for you. Cool. Yeah. And I know you have a special gift for five of our listeners. The first five people who will be emailing you. Um, uh, I will give the email address right now. It's Christine, mm-hmm. C-H, Christine at cdreese.com. Okay. So and Christine at cdreiss.com. Five and mention this podcast, mm-hmm. and I will and uh, I, tell me your Amazon email because you might have an email that's different for Amazon, and I will gift you Marriage Games, the ebook Marriage Games, which I read and we had amazing sex. So you should try it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I think the first five people should email right away because it's going to improve your sex life. <laughs> Uh, well, thank you so much, Kristen, for um, your time, for sharing all about your work. This was such a fun conversation. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. 
You are welcome. All right, everybody. That's all the time we have this week, and we will see you next week. We hope you liked this episode of the Love Lab podcast. If you enjoyed this show, leave a comment and share it with your friends. And if you want more, we have an entire digital library with the best sex tips and relationship advice at CelineRemy.com. That's C-E-L-I-N-E-R-E-M-Y.com. So join us in the sex vault to continue this adventure. Thanks for listening. And remember, you're amazing.